Hey guys, I'm Dan, one of the engineers at Mishimoto. Today I'm going to show you how to install our direct fit oil cooler kit for the 2010 to 2012 V6 Genesis. Let's check it out. Alright guys, now as I'm sure of you V6 Genesis owners know, these cars tend to run pretty hot. And if you've ever tried to install an oil cooler on this, you'll also realize that it's going to be pretty difficult being that the factory oil housing is plastic and uses a cartridge filter. Now what we've come up with is a billet aluminum filter housing that uses our standard sandwich plate or thermostatic sandwich plate and then uses a spin-on filter. To complement this fully CNC'd oil housing, we coupled the kit with a 19 roll oil cooler and a direct fit bracket that'll hold this oil cooler in place in the front of the car. Tools needed to install the direct fit oil cooler on the V6 Genesis are 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, 27 millimeter socket, Phillips screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench, one inch wrench, extension, quarter drive ratchet, three inch drive ratchet, half inch drive ratchet, three inch drive torque wrench, oil, and a funnel. Installation time is about an hour and a half and is a three out of five on the difficulty level. First step in installing this kit is gonna to be to remove the four pop clips that hold the factory air dam to the ride support. Once you've removed the four pop clips, remove the air dam. All right, next, remove the eight pop clips that hold the bumper to the ride support. Next, remove the two eight millimeter bolts that hold the corners of the bumper to the fenders. There's one bolt on each side. Next, remove the two pop clips from both of the side splash pans. This will allow you to gain access to disconnect the fog lights. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the front splash pan to the body of the car. Next, if your vehicle is equipped with them, disconnect the harnesses for the fog lights. Next step is going to be to remove the front bumper. You're going to do this by pulling on the corners of both sides of the bumper to undo all the pops. Supporting the bottom of the bumper, pull on the top two corners of the bumper to fully disconnect. Next, remove the eight 10 millimeter bolts that hold the lower splash shield to the subframe of the car. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the oil from the factory oil filter housing. To do this, you're gonna need a 27 millimeter socket. Be sure to only loosen it at first to let whatever oil left in the housing drain out before you completely remove the oil filter. Once the oil has stopped draining from the filter housing, go ahead and remove the filter. Now, but remember, keep an oil pan handy because there will still be some extra oil sitting in the bottom of the filter. Next, remove the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold the oil filter housing to the block. Once you've removed all four bolts while still holding onto the filter housing, just slowly let it down and drop down below the car into the oil pan. 
All right guys, now that we have the oil housing off, we're gonna go ahead and clean off the surface where it mounts to. This way, this will ensure us to get a nice, good, clean seal when we go to mount our new billet housing on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a razor blade to go ahead and scrape off any of that dirt or uh, grit that has built up behind the housing over time. Uh, using a razor blade, we're just gonna gently scrape away on the surface. Be sure not to, you know, sort of gouge the surface because that might cause an issue when we go to seal it. All right, cool, now that we have everything scraped off, we're gonna go ahead and take a paper towel and a little bit of brake clean and wipe the surface clean. All right, guys, we're just about ready to install this CNC housing onto the vehicle. But before we do, there's a little bit of prep work we have to do first. This kit comes with two O-rings. They are specialty O-rings. One mounts in one hole, one mounts in the other. And these are designed just as the factory unit comes with. We're gonna go ahead and install these into the sandwich plate by simply lining them up and pressing them in. Make sure you work it all the way around so that they're seated. Okay, once the O-rings are installed, we are good to go to install the filter housing onto the vehicle. All right guys, when it comes to this oil cooler kit, we've given you Genesis owners two options. One, using the traditional sandwich plate, which has two provisions for temperature sensors, pressure sensors, whatever you'd like, or the thermostatic sandwich plate that gives you the ability of all the great performance out of this kit, but also still allows you to keep it as a daily driver. Now, being that this customer was so nice to let us borrow his vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and hook him up with a thermostatic. When you put the two housings side by side, you can clearly see the differences. The stock plastic unit uses replaceable cartridge filters. The whole housing is plastic. These can tend to crack over time. The Mishimoto unit allows you to choose whatever kind of spin-on regular filter you'd like we recommend using the one from the Genesis 2 liter turbo. Okay, first thing we wanna do right before installing it is take a little bit of oil and just lube up these seals. This is gonna ensure a perfect seal. For the initial install of this, we're gonna go ahead and do it from underneath. That's where we can line everything up and then we'll go ahead on the top and torque the bolts down. Once you have the four 12 millimeter bolts threaded into the filter housing, we're gonna go ahead and torque them all down to 15 foot pounds. Okay, now we're ready to prep the oil cooler for going on the vehicle. First thing we're gonna do is take the short line that has the 120 degree fitting on it and thread it down onto the oil cooler. Next step is going to be to take the longer line and thread this to a cooler. Okay. Once they're threaded, let's go ahead and tighten them down. Now remember, these don't have to be super tight because they're going to seal on the tapered end. Genesis comes factory with these two little air dams that direct air through the radiator. Now for this oil cooler kit, the lines are actually gonna run right through the side of it. So you can either choose to cut out for the lines or simply remove it. Next, install the bracket for the oil cooler. Now that we have our oil cooler bracket installed, go ahead and install the oil cooler to the bracket. Next step, once the oil cooler and bracket are installed to the front of the vehicle, is going to be to route the lines over the subframe. Now it's time to install the fittings onto the sandwich plate. OK, 
Okay, once you have the lines rounded, you're good to go for tightening the lines onto the sandwich plate. Okay, once you have the lines tightened to the sandwich plate, go ahead and take a little bit of oil and lube up the back seal on the back of the sandwich plate. Okay, once that's done, you're good to go for installing the sandwich plate to the CNC housing. Okay, once you have the center bolt installed and the sandwich plate sitting loosely against the CNC housing, put your hand up against the line that connects into the sandwich plate and just press it back toward the back of the car. This will give you a little bit of room between the sandwich plate lines and the transmission cooler lines. With the sandwich plate rotated into its proper position, go ahead and tighten the center bolt down to 40 foot pounds. While you're installing one of these oil cooler kits, a really neat thing that you can do is also install these oil line stays. Now these simply just go right over the line, like so, and hold the lines from vibrating back and forth, and also adds a little bit of flair to your engine bay. Next, install the oil filter. Next, reinstall the lower splash shield to the car. This is eight 10 millimeter bolts. Next, reinstall the front bumper. Next, reinstall the front splash pan. Now that we have the bumper back on, go ahead and reconnect the fog lights. Next, reinstall the side splash shields using two pop clips for each. Next, reinstall the two 8mm bolts that hold the back corners of the bumper to the fender. Next, reinstall all of the pop clips that hold the top of the bumper to the radio support. Next, reinstall the front air dam. Now that we have our oil cooler kit installed, we're gonna go ahead and add about three quarters of a quart of oil to the system, and then we're gonna fire it up, check for leaks. Once you've checked to make sure you don't have any leaks, Go ahead and recheck the oil fill. If you need more, give it a little bit more. Okay, that concludes the install. Take a car out for a ride and enjoy your new Mishimoto products.